Hey there flockers, welcome to the Epic Hobby, I'm Mike from Epic Duck Studios and today I'm going to be assembling and painting a 3D printed tank, a T-34 tank to be specific, from 3D Wargaming. Now this tank is designed to be printed on a low cost home 3D printer and it is broken up into different parts to really facilitate that to take advantage of the way filament based 3D printers work. Which is why it's based in a couple different pieces here and I'm just quickly doing a little test fit here to make sure everything snaps together well. And honestly, the only issue I had was that the spokes for the tracks, I glued them onto the wrong sides. Since doing this build, the designer of the model has actually included a small key, so they can't be put on the wrong side anymore, so that will never happen again. A couple parts of the model, such as the turret and the actual weapon on the turret, are either snap fit or friction fit, so they can be moved around a little bit for gameplay or just for aesthetic reasons. Other parts do need to be glued together. So these green rails with the seven little spokes along them, these are the parts that I glued on the wrong side of the model, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Again, that's been resolved, so it can't happen again in any future builds. So since I've dry fit everything, I'm going to go ahead and start assembly now. All it takes is super glue and it bonds almost instantly and very strongly. To the point where when I wanted to try and take apart the model to fix the error I made, I couldn't. It actually started bending the model just ever so slightly, but it was definitely impossible to break the super glue bond between these pieces of plastic. So the main tank body comes in two parts, the front and the back, and that's mostly so it will fit on small volume printers. And beyond that, there's just a series of small little plates that add extra detail that were printed separately and just get glued on. And here again are the axle rails, which I accidentally glue on backwards here. Totally my fault. Now that said, if you had the plans yourself, it only takes a couple cents worth of filament to replace these pieces. The real cost in 3D printing is the time to print as opposed to the filament. Beyond that though, I was able to just clip off most of the spokes and the two outermost spokes still lined up correctly with the hubs on the track and so I was just able to clip off the ones in the middle, flip it over and it still worked fine. The model would look a little bit weird if you looked at it from the bottom, but people don't do that that often. So now I'm just gluing the detail plates onto the main chassis of the tank. Now this model does also come with some optional pieces. There's some cargo boxes and little containers that can basically be mounted to the top of the tank track covers, but I opted to build my tank without them. So now that I've built the main chassis, I want to trial fit the turret, make sure it's okay, and I do find it gets a little bit caught in one point, and turning over the turret reveals that a little bit of the 3D printed filament was kind of sticking out, so I just trimmed that off with a hobby knife. Alright, now that assembly is out of the way, I'm going to begin airbrushing the model. I'm going to be using my Badger Sotar 2020, a little bit of Tamiya X20A thinner, and just regular Vallejo surface primer to begin with. I'm going to be starting with black. Now Vallejo surface primer is airbrush friendly, but I do like to thin it just a little bit. But because it is airbrush friendly, I'll thin it right in the cup and just swirl it around with an old paintbrush. Now I'm going to begin by just priming the entire model black. 
I will say that if you have the option, I would probably have preferred to use a darker filament as opposed to the neon green that's seen here. And the reason for that is there's a couple areas that it's really hard to airbrush, mainly between the different hubs on the track. And if I had used a black plastic to print this or a black filament, you wouldn't notice that nearly as much. Now the way this tank was designed, it's really easy to leave the tracks off so you can paint them separately, which is absolutely fantastic. As you can see, this is the part where, as I described just a little while ago, it's harder to get the airbrush to kind of paint between the hubs of the track. If you look really closely throughout the whole build process, you'll see a little bit of green between the hubs. It's really minor, not too noticeable, but I could go back and clean it up by brush if I really needed to. So once the primer's down, I'm going to hit just about everything with some Vallejo Model Air Panzer Dark Grey. This mostly is just going to form a nice base coat I can build other colors up on top of, which is just a little bit easier to work on top of than black is. Next I'm going to paint the top of the chassis of the tank as well as the turret with some Citadel Strachan Green. Now I've gone ahead and transferred most of my Citadel paints to dropper bottles and thinned them in the process so they're a little bit more airbrush friendly, but I am still adding some Tamiya X28 to my airbrush before I add the paint in. You can also see I shook my airbrush just a little bit too vigorously side to side and sloshed a little bit of paint all over my cardboard box. Now it's a cardboard box so I don't really care that much. but you could potentially get some on the model doing that, so it's still worth being careful and making sure you don't fill your cup of paint a little too much. So as I apply this green over the gray base coat, you can see the gray kind of really brings it down a little. It's not nearly as vibrant as the little bit of green I did spill in the cardboard boxes. The color is much more muted and that lends it more of an authentic military tone. Now that said, I do want to add a little bit of vibrancy to the paint on the tank, so I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Thraca Green Wash and really thin this down and just use it to lightly tint some parts of the tank, just to give it some brighter areas. Now this will make the green more vibrant because it adds a basically punchier green to the model, but it also ends up making it a little bit darker, so I am going to focus it towards the bottom of the model and sort of the outer edges of the model. Alright, so now that I'm done airbrushing, it's time to glue the tank tracks on and then continue with some brushwork. You can see here where I've clipped off the middle spokes as I discussed before because I goofed up and the hubs just didn't line up correctly with the axles. Just a little bit of super glue on the outer two axles though holds the entire tank track in place no problem. Alright, so now it's time for some brushwork. I'm going to be using a couple different Vallejo paints here. I'm still using Vallejo air paints because I find they make very, very smooth metallics, even though I'm applying them with a brush. So I'm going to be using Vallejo Game Air Gunmetal and Vallejo Model Air Steel primarily. Now the Vallejo Gunmetal is quite dark, and I'm really just going to be using it for the hubs on the tank tracks and the barrel of the turret.
At this stage I did try painting a few of the details with it, but I found it too dark later and come back in with the Vallejo steel afterwards. Alright, so now it is on to the steel details. This is a much more vibrant metallic, it's very, very bright, and it goes on nice and smooth, and that's why I absolutely love using it, even as a brush on metallic. Now it may seem too bright initially, it's going to go on very shiny, but I'm going to be adding some washes, some agrax or shades, some null oil, and then even some weathering powders after, which will really bring it back down again. So if it looks really out of place, don't worry about that too much yet. Now there's a lot of small rivets and other details that I do paint with the metallic steel here, so I'm going to skip ahead quite a bit and just kind of jump forward through the model. So with all the steel details down, I'm going to begin applying a detailing wash of Agrax Earthshade. I'm basically going to be using this to outline almost every detail on the model, just to sort of give the impression of a shadow and a little bit of kind of dirt built into the crevices of the model. Now I'm basically using the Agrax Earthshade for panel lining, and there's a fair number of panels here, so I'm going to again skip ahead bit by bit through the model and just show you little steps. Now I'm going to make the tracks look nice and dirty with some Daler Rowney acrylic ink in Red Earth. Now inks tend to be very potent and typically I would dilute them before using them, but in this case I want it to look like a lot of dirt has really been caked into the tank tracks. So I'm not at all concerned with diluting it in this case, I'm going to apply it straight onto the tank tracks and onto the hubs and just let it really settle into the crevices and the gaps in the track. The Red Earth ink is a great color because it also works very well as a rust and kind of lends a little bit of an aged worn look to the hubs of the track. Now I'm applying the red earth to the outside edge of the bottom of the track as well so that basically when the model is viewed in profile you can see a little bit of the dirty color underneath the track. I'm not getting it all the way around the track because it's just not really necessary 
and thus we are painting this for more of a display quality finish. Now with the bottom is done, I'm going to do the same to the top of the track and as well as the inside surface of the bottom part of the track. Next I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Citadel Nuln Oil to just add some really deep shadows to the hubs of the track. Now this is the really fun part, I'm going to be using some MIG weathering powder, in this case post-apocalyptic earth. Now with weathering powders you're supposed to use a pigment binder to affix them to the model and I don't have one on hand. So what I'm doing is I'm just using a couple different brushes here and the first brush I'm using is an older sort of wide headed beater brush, I've really abused this brush in the past dry brushing and so on. I'm using it to basically almost just like push the pigment into the crevices of the model. Then I'm following up with a similar brush that's a little bit stiffer and using it to brush away any excess sort of loose pigment so that the stuff in the crevices really sticks. Now you can see the weathering powder can actually take things a little too far. It's almost killed all the color underneath it. The Agrax Earthshade wash is lost at this point. This is actually a little bit of overkill and there is a way to fix that. We're basically going to come in with a, another brush shortly and just a little bit of water and use it to loosen up some of the pigment and then a fourth brush to just wipe away the wet pigment. But before I do that, let's just work around the model, get this into all the different crevices, get it just looking really good and weathered. It's going to be a little bit of overkill, like I say, you're going to take this just a little bit too far and then dial it back a bit again. So here's where I'm going to start using some water on a brush to just loosen up some of the pigment and then grabbing a fourth brush here and just wiping up, sort of soaking up that watery pigment now so it leaves some of the bigger flatter surfaces alone. You'll also see on the larger flatter surfaces I sometimes just smudge away with my thumb instead of using the paintbrush, it's just a little bit quicker for me. So you can see as I start to wipe away the excess pigment that the green starts to show back through again and it really gives the pigment itself more of a caked in look in the corners. And with that this T34 is done. I want to thank 3D Wargaming for giving me the opportunity to paint one of these pre-release tanks. It's an absolutely awesome kit and I look forward to seeing what they come up with next. If you're interested in learning more about these models, please visit 3dwargaming.com. Thanks again for watching and until next time, do something epic.